Hello, Keith. I'm Colonel Blackwell. And I'm Chief Esparza. On this discussion for Keesler Confronts, our guest today is Chaplain Boyd. Um, I'm excited to have you as a guest because you are um, the only um, African-American female um, 06 in the Chaplain Corps, active duty, right? And I think you were the first in DOD um, and the only active duty in the Air Force. So um, it's an honor to, to be able to sit here and have these discussions with you. Um, I co-authored a paper on emotional intelligence and how I thought emotional intelligence was important to have in the military to teach it, et cetera. Uh, as part of that, it talked about the difference between um, empathy and sympathy and how important empathy was. So my first question to you is, um, what role do you think empathy plays in race discussions? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. So, so empathy is vital. And as a caregiver, as a chaplain, uh, anytime someone tells their story, we need to listen empathetically, not judging, not uh, dismissing, or not uh, you know, denying anyone's experience because we know that that can add to their trauma. But when it comes to discussions about race, for some reason, those rules go out the window, even for caregivers, because um, when we listen to people talk about their experience with race, Sometimes uh, people get defensive. People uh, want to discount or question or deny or dismiss a person's account of their experience. And what that does is it not only uh, puts a barrier up between the person and the individual that they're talking to, but it also uh, deepens the pain. It also deepens the sense of victimization when a person not only lacks empathy, but uh, exudes the opposite, especially when they know what empathy looks like and, and that it's important to connect with people because the importance of empathy is connection at the end of the day. But if I've never experienced racism myself, how do I um, ensure that I continue that connection with you without minimizing the pain that you may be going through because you have experienced racism? We need to listen, first of all. We need to listen and we need to hear and it's, and again, if we compare it to other examples when we listen to a person's story. So if a person comes in and talks to a chaplain and they're a victim of domestic violence, for example, uh, just because I have not personally been a victim of domestic violence, uh, I don't need to uh, question or blame them or uh, deny that they're being victimized. I need to just simply listen and empathize with them. And only when I empathize with them can I help them get help? Can I help them look forward to ways that they can maybe uh, move forward in their situation? But without that connection, without that empathy, that person will feel unheard and, and misunderstood. And it seems like through all of these discussions, um, connection continues to be that um, the word and the theme that we uh, talk about the most and how fundamental that is to getting past a, a lot of these issues, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. So my question that I really want to ask, and, and I feel like we're always on the cusp of asking this um, during our discussions, is how do you teach somebody mm. that emp empathy is important? I mean, we can tell them, you know, we can teach them how to be empathetic, but, but how do we get into their you know, get into their psyche and say empathy is an important thing because uh, not everybody's feeling that. So as a caregiver and as an educator, um, could you help us with that? Yes. Yeah, so I, I speak a lot of times in analogies and examples, and I use my own story often with empathy. Uh, so just because I have not experienced, for example, uh, some of the historic systemic racism that another person experienced, I should not dismiss their account or their experience. So on a, on a personal level, um, so I'm an immigrant. I came uh, to the United States at age six with my mother. Um, she sent for my brother and I, and she has a classic American story. She came to the United States with um, everything she owned in one suitcase and $13 in her pocket uh, with an eighth grade education. And she just risked it all to provide a better life for my brother and I. And so our heritage from Jamaica in the islands, uh, we did not experience the systemic racism that African-Americans had experienced. Um, my husband, Larry, on the other hand, he was born in Alabama. He remembers 
walking to the back of the bus as a little child. He remembers, um, you know, a cross being burned on his lawn with people with Confederate flags. He remembers the, uh, you know, pickup truck with the Confederate flag chasing him alongside a railroad track as he ran for his life. So those things are etched in his brain. I did not experience that. But as he tells me that story, I can empathize with him. Now, when we see a Confederate flag, I don't have the same reaction as my husband does. You know, I don't expect him to feel the way I feel because I empathize with his story. Uh, it brings pain for him. It, I have no pain that's associated with it. So empathy is teaching others the ability to understand the person's pain, not dismissing it, listening to their story without trying to invalidate it. Because a person's pain is a person's pain. And because they are um, experiencing it different from us and they see it different from us, they had a different journey. And so we need to understand and accept their journey. That's what we've always been, you know, that's what we want um, through all of our conversations for people to get to know each other, mm -hmm. listen to the stories, empathize. I mean, we can't always put ourselves in other people's shoes, but we can, we can listen to what they have to tell us. And it allows us to get to know them a little bit more, a little deeper. Yes. And I will say before I close is if anybody has ever met you, um, they know that you are an extremely empathetic person, that you do care and love for everybody. And I hope that we can all learn from you. Um, I don't know how you do it. Um, you give so much to others and we appreciate all that you've given um, to us and to help us with this discussion. Yes. So we're very lucky to have you, Chaplain Boyd. Yes, Thank we are. you. Thank you both. You, got, you are you. Um, amazing and, and we appreciate you. So Keesler, please keep the conversations going. Please continue to learn about each other. We appreciate you and the diversity that you also bring to this fight. We will see you in our next conversation. Mm -hmm.